Hello everybody, my name is Matt, I'm with Scope Education, and here we're going to be talking about ventricular tachycardia. Now, I apologize for the little delay in uploading videos. I'm a full-time student, and a 0 out of 10 would not recommend I would rather mace myself. What is ventricular tachycardia? We need to know that before we can go to the different types, right? So if you've done ACLS or whatever, you should be fa fairly familiar with this topic. But ventricular tachycardia basically means that the ventricles have overridden the atria and are now pumping over 120 to 130 beats per minute based off of whatever literature you assume. I personally use 130 because accelerated idioventricular rhythms are thought to be reperfusion rhythms and you don't really want to treat those they're going to last for maybe a couple seconds to a minute or two and then they'll get better basically that means that you have reperfused the heart and usually they stop around 120 so i think for me personally i like to use 130 and above is vtac but usually vtac is a lot faster than 130. basically what happens and you can see this in the diagram to the right the ventricles are going to be pumping like i said over 130 times a minute but you notice that the ha are still contracting and that is going to be important. So they do still contract, but the vent ventricles have taken over the majority of the pumping. Because impulses are coming from the ventricles, you're going to see a regular wide complex tachycardia, usually over 130, with no P waves for every QRS. So basically there's no P QRS, P QRS, P QRS. There's going to be just QRS, 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 just like you can see on the screen to the right. And Another big point I want to make is that it's going to be less than one big box wide because anything that's about a big box wide, you got to start taking into account hyperkalemia. So here are the different types of VTAC. When you go through school, you're taught about monomorphic and polymorphic, but you aren't really taught a lot unless you go into electrophysiology about the outflow tract tachycardia, the bidirectional, the fascicular, and all the genetic types. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to kind of just hit on these ones. These are going to be the ones we're going to go over. Here's your monomorphic VTAC. Basically, it's going to be either focal or re-entry. We're going to get to that in the next slide. It's going to have the same morphology across the entire strip. So basically, as it says, mono is one. Morphic is morphology. So one morphology of VTAC. You can notice AV dissociation. AV dissociation is, like I said before, the atria are still contracting, so you're still going to have P waves, but they're not going to be conducting the ventricles. So it's not going to be the PQRS, PQRS. You're going to see baby P waves, as you can see here, buried inside of these, but they're not conducting the QRS complexes. They're just buried inside of it because the HR is still beating. You can also have capture beats or fusion beats, and you can see those in the upper right picture. Capture beats are basically atrial activity that make it through the actual VTAC, and you can see it in the upper right picture. So basically, the capture beat is what the normal beat is because the SA node was able to find the perfect time to send an impulse from the SA node to the AV node and it was actually able to perfuse, which is why the beat looks different in comparison to the VTAC. Now a fusion beat is basically the atria and the ventricle impulses combine and they produce a hybrid kind of complex. So it's going to be a mixture of the both. So now we're going to talk about focal and reentry VTAC. Focal basically means one part of the ventricles it becomes really pissed off and that part becomes irritated and it starts causing impulses to come from that one spot. Re-entry can be due to scar mediated such as through MIs and stuff like that and the actual impulse does circles around the scar tissue which also can cause it. And here's an example of your monomorphic VTAC. You can see it's over a rate of 130 so if you actually look at the big box method 300, 150 so it's a little over 150 so and it's, you don't see PQRS, PQRS, so this is going to be your monomorphic VTAC. Now we're going into polymorphic. Now you have your normal polymorphic and you have your torsades de poids or TDP. Normal polymorphic VTAC is usually caused by cardiac ischemia. Now what's interesting is that these look very, very, very similar and I wouldn't really condone trying to figure out and determine between them because one is usually, like I said, caused by cardiac ischemia and the other one is due to a long QT interval. And there, it's called polymorphic VTAC because you have different morphologies. You get this party streamer effect you can see on the right so torsades is a type of polymorphic VTAC and you can't actually diagnose someone with torsades until you have an actual 12 lead before they went into it or post conversion showing a prolonged QT interval of over 500 milliseconds. This prolongation of the QT interval increases the likelihood that there's going to be the R on T phenomenon which is going to send them into these rhythms. Here's an example of torsades. You can see the prolonged QT interval 
and this can also occur with a prolonged QU interval, which is caused by hypokalemia. You can see that the R happens right here on the T, and then that sends them into that polymorphic torsades right here. Next, we're going to be talking about outflow tract tachycardias. So these happen in the left and right outflow tracks inside the ventricles. The left outflow tract tachycardia is going to be a monomorphic VTAC, and it's going to have a right bundle branch morphology. And the right outflow tract tachycardia is going to be the exact same it's going to be monomorphic VTAC, and it's going to have a left bundle branch morphology. Obviously, these are types of VTAC, so they have to be over 130 beats per minute on the slow side, and they also have to be less than one big box wide, and no PQRS, PQRS. Here's the left outflow track tachycardia, and you can see you got a right bundle branch pattern over here. And you don't see any P waves that are conducting every QRS complex, and it's wide. The right outflow track tachycardia... Same thing, it's a very fast, wide rhythm, and it has a left bundle branch block morphology, and you can see that over in V1, it's down. Next, we're gonna be talking about bidirectional VTAC. This is a really rare kind of VTAC, but at the same time, it looks really cool. Bidirectional VTAC is ping-ponging inside of the his prakinji system, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This creates an alternating beat-to-beat -beat QRS complex, so one's going to be up, and the next one's down. One's up, one's down, one's up, one's down. And this is, because they're changing morphologies, it's going to be a polymorphic VTAC. And one of the number one causes of this is going to be digitalis poisoning. Here's an example of bidirectional VTAC you can see over here. This one right here is on the line, so let's go 300, and it's going to be around... 150 beats per minute so you can see this one's up and then this one's down up down up down it's over 130 beats per minute there's no p ways conducting every qrs complex this is your bi-directional vtac and you might think this is these are just pvcs but due to the rate and everything you need to consider the bi-directional vtac now we're going to go into fascicular vtacs and these are generally more narrow in comparison to the monomorphic vtacs that we see but they're still going to be wide. So you have a yeah inside the left ventricle, you have the left anterior fascicle and left posterior fascicle, and each one of these can get pissed off and kick off and cause VTAC. Inside the left anterior fascicular VT, which take up about five to ten percent of cases, they're going to have a right bundle branch morphology with right axis deviation. The left posterior fascicular VT take up the majority of cases and they're going to have a right bundle branch morphology just like the left but they're going to have left axis deviation now not everyone likes axis deviation i understand but i love this little thumb rule because it's stupid easy if lead one is going to be your left thumb and lead two or avf whichever one you want to choose is going to be your right thumb two thumbs up guess what that's your normal axis if your left thumb is up and your right thumb is down your thumbs have left each other so you're going to get left axis deviation if left thumb is down and right thumb is up your thumbs are heading right towards each other so that's going to be a right axis deviation so your left interior fascicular vtac you can see you got your right bundle branch morphology and look at one, one is down, so put your left thumb down, and AVF is up, and that's gonna be your, and your thumbs are heading right towards each other, so it's your right axis deviation. This is also a wide complex, and you don't see P waves for every QRS, and a lot of these times they get mistaken for SVT with a barency, which is why I believe that we shouldn't even have SVT with a barency. I actually have a video on wide complex tachycardias, which I'll link up in the right right now. Feel free to check that out, but I believe SVT with a barency, unless you're in electrophysiology, shouldn't even cross your mind, especially in the emergency room. Next, we have your left posterior fascicular tachycardia. One is up, and lead two is down. So one's up, your left thumb's up, your lead two, your right thumb is down. Guess what? Your thumbs have left each other, so you have left axis deviation. And you can see in V1, you have a right bundle branch morphology. It's a wide complex, no P waves conducting every QRS. It's VTAC. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I really appreciate you guys listening and tuning in. A lot of these 12 lead examples that I've gotten is from Life in the Fast Lane. You can see their link here. It'll also be in the description. I love their site. It's a free open access medical education site. They have a lot of ECG examples there, and I love looking at it. So go ahead, check them out. And if you guys don't know, once again, we have our own website where we don't just make YouTube videos. We also make a lot of critical care, emergency medicine, and hospital and pre-hospital stuff. So feel free to check that out. It'll also be in the description below. Now, like I said, my name is Matt. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture.